Tell me about uh, Pearl and May, the, the Shanghai girls. Two sisters who grow up in Shanghai, which at that time in the 1930s was the Paris of Asia. It was a very glamorous city. Very uh, cosmopolitan. Very too. cosmopolitan city. Had the French and the British and Americans and the Chinese, of course, and Russians. Russians and and just Jews riding. Every, and everyone who could get there got there, you know, <laughs> because it was seen as this, as you said, a very cosmopolitan place, but also it did have these great contrasts of tremendous poverty and great wealth. Um, people who were illiterate and then all of this culture and excitement going on at the same time. A lot of um, sort of depravity and decadence and at the same time you, you know you did have those sort of buttoned up British people keeping things running properly. So it, it had all this whole range and, and di diversity. And so Pearl and May are what were called beautiful girls. They were models for Shanghai poster and calendar advertising. And this advertising really promoted the good life um, and a changed life for women in China. So these aren't you know, the old-fashioned Chinese girls with bound feet who were illiterate, who never got out. These were young women in these posters and calendars and other types of ads who um, were, you know, dressed to the nines and had beautiful makeup and hair and would play tennis or dive into a pool or do archery or step off a plane and drive cars and, let's see, smoke cigarettes. And often they were shown in these very mm, rich and kind of beautiful boudoirs as though they just stepped out of the bath. They were selling mo the fact that they were modern. And so in the borders of these calendars would be the things that they were selling. So everything from matches to carburetors, from baby formula to cigarettes. and Pearl and May, that this is what they do, and they think that they have this really wonderful life, and in fact they do, and then things start to go south. Daddy uh, gambles away. He gambles away not only his money, but their money. And their dowries. Their dowries, everything. And so they're married off in, to settle a debt to, uh, in arranged marriages to men um, from Los Angeles, Chinatown. And uh, they fight going. and. You know, they're not going to go, but they end up having to go uh, because they're fleeing the Japanese, they're fleeing gangsters, they're, they're, just, they're just in big trouble. Their time is done in China. And there's a further complication because May announces halfway across the Pacific, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yes, by the way, she's pregnant. Right, and so how are they going to deal with that? And um, these marriages had already sort of maybe been consummated back in China, but uh, now it's Pearl who's going to have to really be the mother of this child. So they actually fake one, one pregnancy. They fake one pregnancy. And hide another one. And hide another one, yeah. But you know, in those old peasant clothes, I mean, a part of why peasant clothes were designed the way they were was to hide anything that would show that you were a woman. Um, so that could hide a, a baby in there too. Life in Shanghai uh, and being rich, and then they come to Los Angeles and America's gold. Gold Mountain, the Gold and, Mountain. And Gold Mountain, uh, yeah, ate a mountain and ate so much gold. No, no, not at all. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to write Shanghai Girls is that we had a lot of women in my family who had come over in arranged marriages. My great uncle, for example, back in 1932, he took his family back to China, and a lot of dads would say, you know, here's a little money, go buy a souvenir. He said, you know, as long as we're here, let's get all you boys' wives, and that's what they did. And so the oldest wife was about 25, the youngest one was about 15. In China, they had had servants. When they came to the United States and moved into Chinatown, they became the servants. They lived very closed-in lives, very narrow lives. They didn't get out much. They got out for weddings, funerals, and one-month birthdays. And that was about it. Um, in China, 
it was very different for women. The country was changing and evolving, and certainly after Mao came into power, you know, he said women hold up half the sky. Then that meant they had to come out and do stuff. You know, if they were going to eat, they had to work. It was very different in Chinatowns, actually around the world, where people had moved and they held on to their culture and they held on to their traditions. So, women didn't get out very much, and a couple of these wives are still alive today. And they lived in the United States for, what, 70, 80 years, and they may speak about 10 words of English. Are you writing a sequel to this? Yes. Because <laughs> okay, I would have been really ticked, and I probably would have just stormed out of the interview. I hadn't planned it that way, really? actually. It was just, I, so either I'm a really bad writer, <laughs> Which I don't or think. I did something that, that really made people want to know more about those characters, because... Um, everyone has said, you know, will there be a sequel, will there be a sequel, and including the publisher at Random House who said, you, you know, that's what you really need to do, and that's what we'd really love for you to do. And so I'm actually very happy about that because when I get done with the novel, you know, those characters are still so with me. And sometimes you feel like you're done with them, but sometimes they aren't done with you. And sometimes it's the other way around, but I just, I'm just excited because I want to know, I mean, I know what's going to happen to them, but I, and I had it in my mind all along, and I guess maybe I should have put that in there, but it was going to be, you know, I could see it was going to be a whole other book. The book is Shanghai Girls. I've been speaking with the author Lisa C. and Shanghai Girls, published by Random House.